Hello, how are you? This is Hagan Kim again. Today's topic is that I like to address the nerves of a distal leg as a part of a lower limb ultrasound workshop. I will address the sura nerve, posterior tibia nerve, and plantar nerves. This is my disclosure. So the sura nerve is coming from L5 and S1. As we know, sura nerve is actually combined by two nerves. One is from medial cutaneous sura nerve, which is from tibia nerve, and lateral cutaneous sura nerve from common peroneal nerve. So if you look at the right side of the cartoon, there is a sciatic uh, nerve is coming down in the knee area, the lateral side, the common peroneal nerve, and then tibial nerve goes through the medial side of the lower limb, uh, posterior part. And just before uh, going into the peroneal nerve and lateral common, I'm sorry, common peroneal nerve uh, gives a branch of a lateral sura cutaneous nerve and then tibial nerve also gives us a medial sura cutaneous nerve. And they usually meet at the uh, two heads of gastrox. Uh, at the level, they become one sura nerve. So in most cases, the sura nerve runs first in the midline, then moves laterally in the distal third of the calf. During its course, sura nerve passes from deep to superficial to facial tissues. And sura nerve runs with small saphenous pain, and you rather use high frequency of probe to see small uh, sura nerve better, and then rather use elevator technique uh, by Bianchi. And uh, this is just cartoon to show sura nerve. Sura nerve is a pure sensory nerve and runs posterior lateral side and supplies posterior lateral side of the calf and then those are part of the uh, lateral foot. And nerve block, when you do the sura nerve block, it gets done two centimeter proximal to the tip of the lateral malleolus and halfway between the lateral malleolus and Achilles tendon. I'm gonna show a little more. So if you look at the right top, uh, corner, this Achilles tendon, therefore Achilles tendon side is the medial of the posterior calf and peroneus brevis is the lateral side of the uh, posterior leg. So when you look at the Achilles tendon and peroneus brevis, peroneus brevis uh, um, usually still muscles at the ankle level, but peroneus longus is a tendon at uh, ankle level. So the muscle, what you can see, at the ankle level is the peroneus brevis and the lateral side. So between the peroneus brevis and Achilles tendon, there is a sura nerve. So sura nerve usually close to the Achilles tendon and small saphenous vein is close to the peroneus brevis. So let's uh, study about the uh, small saphenous vein. Small saphenous vein is the most prominent and physiologically important to superficial vein below the knee. Uh, this uh, is a thick wall about three millimeter in diameter. And it usually starts from, because this is vein, right? It starts uh, at the lateral aspect of the foot and it ascends posteriorly to the lateral malleoli as a continuation of those are venous arch. And it becomes uh, sumo saphenous vein here at the ankle. And it continues up the calf between the two gastrocheads. As we learned, at the two gastrocheads, you can see the sura nerve is splitting in two usually uh, to medial and lateral cutaneous sura nerve. At this level, uh, you can also see the sumo saphenous vein. Sumo saphenous vein usually go continuously, uh, uh, go to the popliteal vein, it drain into the popliteal vein at the end, at the popliteal fossa. So if you look at here, um, this is the Achilles tendon, and this is the uh, lateral malleoli, and then the blue close to the lateral, lateral malleoli is the small saphenous vein, 
And then the yellow, which is close to the Achilles tendon, is the sura nerve. And then muscle here, which is the parents brevis, because parents longus is usually tendon at the uh, lateral malleolus level. So do not confuse that if you see the muscle that's parents brevis, and then between the parents brevis and Achilles tendon, you can see sumor saphenous vein and sura nerve, which is gonna be covered by um, the retina column. So it can be compressed, okay. Then uh, there's a, actually what we call the hammock sign for sura nerve. So we're gonna see a little bit uh, through video. This video was uh, taken from our practice with our trainees at Columbia University Medical Center. So now I'm showing uh, this on my uh, probes at the, this is the parent's brevis, Achilles tendon is here. We are using Doppler to make sure that this is the small saphenous vein. And you can see this uh, honeycomb shape is the sura nerve. But also you can see, it looks like there's white, uh, the oval shape like this. Looks like a hammock. So we call the hammock sign for the sura nerve. And then you can confirm that uh, the lateral side is the parent's brevis and medial side is the Achilles tendon. So can you see the hammock very well here? See, look, I don't think I can lay down because I'm too heavy to lay down here. But small saphenous vein and sura nerve. This is the sura nerve, okay? You guys can see sura nerve can uh, sit inside of the hammock at the ankle level. This is the ankle level, okay? Remember, lateral side of the lateral malleolus, between the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. Okay, then well, let's go to the next uh, slide. And now we saw the hammock sign, but let me see, is this the video? Oh, this is a picture, just I took a picture. Parents brevis and Achilles tendon is very hyperechoic. You can say Achilles tendon. You can see the hammock here. And then this is the sumor saphenous vein. This hazy honeycomb shape is the sura nerve. So hammock, sumor saphenous vein, and sura nerve. Okay, then I'm gonna go to next. This is the video. And then I'm trying to follow the sura nerve to the knee from uh, ankle. I'm sorry, because today is Halloween. So outside is very actually noisy. And then let me see. Uh, and then you can see this is a parent's brevis, huge, right? This is the ankle, you can see hammock sign here, or hammock here. And then this is, a, now you know, small saphenous vein. It's a hazy, a little bit of a honeycomb shape. This is a sura nerve. And I am going to move my probe proximally. So I'm gonna scan up continuously to see. Now it's a little, uh, below the subcutaneous tissue, but as you uh, scan up, actually sura nerve is gonna go to into the subcutaneous tissue. So look at this already in the subcutaneous tissue, small saphenous vein, it become flat. So it become flat. And then look, but still sura nerve is only one nerve. It looks like a, it's dividing inside these two. So now it's here, I cannot really do worse. I'm gonna place again my probe. Can you see here two? Ooh, hold on a second. So you see, actually this is a small saphenous vein you are following, we are following. And it looks like there's a sura nerve, but it's a splitting actually, one and two. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go back a little bit. See, splitting, right, two? and two, one and two over there. So this is the uh, actually at the uh, place where the two heads of the gastroc is meeting. And then this is the, in the middle of the posterior cap. So two, 
on saphenous vein, one is going to go to the um, lateral side, the other one is going to stay in the middle. If there is tibial branch, so let's take a look. Okay, so here too, one and two. Ooh, I was so happy to. You see, I'm going back and forth. And uh, let's see, where's my. I'm sorry, it's too. Uh, okay, whoopsie, I missed, but let's go one more time. So here, Prince brevis, small saphenous vein, sura nerve, hammock here. And then as I said, after this uh, ankle level, if you scan up to the knee, the sura nerve is going into the subcutaneous uh, area. So now it's not subcutaneous, underneath of uh, subcutaneous tissues. As you scan up, this sura nerve is gonna go to the subcutaneous tissues. Now I'm in the subcutaneous, the sura nerve is sub in the, going into the subcutaneous tissue. And then still you can see two structure very well. Let's stop here. This is the small saphenous vein and this is a sura nerve. Still, you see sura nerve, and I'm gonna replace my probe. It's in the subcutaneous level. You can see my sura nerve is there. Sura nerve is splitting too now. I don't, I hope that you guys saw it. Sura nerve is splitting into two nerves. Here I'm showing two going back and forth. This you can see. Oh, uh, let me stop here. Actually, this is the medial gastro. This is the lateral gastro. So the two heads of the gastro is meeting here, and your sura nerve is here, splitting in two. So now two here, one and two. So I'm going to stop here. So when you practice, pay attention to uh, the plate at the uh, two gastrochas, uh, two gastrochas uh, are meeting, those place you're gonna find out the small saphenous vein in the middle and along with the sura nerve, but sura nerve is splitting at that time. So I don't have a great video from our practice, but I think as we practice together, I can possibly find out good uh, model to show uh, the sura nerve split in the future. Okay, then uh, let's go to the medial uh, malleolus or medial side of the ankle. So there is tadal tunnel over there, right? Uh, we have a fibrous osteous tunnel, we call that tarsal tunnel. They're located uh, posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus. So medial malleolus is here, and calcaneus um, is here, calcaneus bone, which is covered by flexor retinaculum that runs between the medial malleolus and calcaneus. Calcaneus is here, medial malleolus is here, and the in between, flexor retinaculum here, that is the tarsal, that um, composed tarsal tunnel. And within the tarsal tunnel, you, everybody knows Tom, Dick, and Harry, or Tom, Dick, and very nervous Harry. So Tom is the uh, tibia exposure, Dick is the flexor digitorum longus, and is that, uh, Anterior to A is artery, N is nerve. So posterior tibial artery, posterior tibial nerves, and the palm, dick, and hairy is the flex halosis longus. So let's say if here, this is the posterior tibialis, palm, and then dick, flex digitorum longus, then 
we have flexor hyalosis longus. In between, we have posterior tibial artery, and behind that is the posterior tibial nerve. And um, the posterior tibial nerve passes between the flexor digitorum longus and hyalosis longus. Flexor digitorum longus and flexor hyalosis longus. Between these two, there is artery and nerve bundle. And then once they get into this tarsal tunnel, uh, posterior tibial nerve split into two, medial plantar nerve and lateral plantar nerve. So they said a bifurcation of a posterior tibial nerve before tarsal tunnel happens in only 5% people. So we cover with flexor retinaculum here. If we, this uh, flexor retinaculum compresses and then tarsal tunnel syndrome happens. So let's take a look. Uh, as you see, this is, is my uh, resident uh, right side the leg and then you can see the uh, short axis view of the right medial side of the ankle. So here you can see this is the medial malleolus which is the here medial malleolus and the right, left side which is the uh, top and then thumb, dick and hairy right? Thumb, um, posterior tibialis, dick, flexor digitorum longus. So there's a little bit of a um, dark round, but if this one gets increases, uh, I think there's some swelling, but this uh, um, is normal. And um, then there is a one, two, three, three, or one, two, three. And there's a flexor hyalosis longus, thumb, dick, artery, and nerve, and flexor hyalosis longus. So I'm gonna go one by one. So this is a posterior tibialis uh, tendon. This is the flexor distum longus tendon. This is the posterior tibial artery. This is the posterior tibial nerve, which looks like a, a little honeycomb shape. Then this is the flexor hyalosis longus. Oh, I'm sorry. So here you can see the uh, posterior tibial vein and surrounding, surrounding the posterior tibial artery. Sometimes three vessels you can see, sometimes you can see two vessels, but you now you uh, veins are compressible, so you can press your probe to remove the vein. Only you can look at the posterior tibial artery and posterior tibial nerve. I, I love this uh, actually, um, pictures, it shows very clearly Tom, Dick, and Harry, their findings. But I, while I was uh, practicing with our uh, trainees, uh, as I, I am not a sports medicine specialist, so I did not study that much about the foot muscles. But for us to study plantar nerves, I think we should study a little bit about foot muscles. So I, there are four layers of foot. So first layer is the AB ductal hyalosis, flexor digitorum brevis, AB ductal digiti minimi. That's the first layer. So uh, AB ductal hyalosis, flexor digitorum brevis, AB ductal digiti minimi. This is, uh, the, these three muscles are first layer of the foot. And then second layer of foot is mostly tendon. So flex hyalosis longus tendon, flex digitorum longus tendon here, you guys can see it, right? And then the muscle wise quadratus plantae, which is gonna complete on the flex digitorum longus. That's the, their insertion, right? And then four lumbricars. That's the second layer of the foot. And then quadratus plantar action is promoting the toe flexors. If your patient has, a, like my patient who 
I'm dealing with the uh, patients with hypertonia. Many times I do flex a digital brevis, but I never tried the quadrate supplante. Maybe from now on I may try. And uh, rarely I try lumbricars. Maybe I start to do that. Now I am better with all the foot muscles. The third layer of the foot is the oh, mostly flexors. So you look at this flexor hallucis brevis here, flexor digitorum minimi. So everything is a flexor except two AB ductal hallucis. AB ductal hallucis has two heads transverse head and oblique head. So oblique head is, uh, um, I usually, when I do the AB dactylosis, if my patient has a um, hallux valgus, is it starting now, then I usually try to prevent by giving toxin to AB doctor hallucis. Uh, mostly I give uh, toxin to transverse head. You can find the motor point very easily. The fourth layer is the uh, interocyte muscles. So the, their middle line, we draw the line, the abductor and abduction and adduction uh, happens, uh, how do you say, it? happens uh, um, with the second toes. So second toe is the, not third uh, toes, the second toe is gonna be the center for abduction and adduction. So three plantar interossi is gonna be adduct, second toe and middle toe. Four dozer interossi is gonna be abduct. I'm sorry, the three plantar interossi is gonna the adductor, adduction of toes. Four interossi toes will abduct spread out from the second toes. So we learned the four layers of foot. So the reason why I studied because of the media and lateral plantar nerves. So media plantar nerves is, actually I cannot really show the ultrasound findings. We tried to get the ultrasound findings with our trainees um, during practice, but it was very hard and we are not very knowledgeable. So we couldn't get it, but I can promise that maybe after a couple of times of practice, we can find that the great uh, findings of these uh, small nerves uh, in the foot. Okay, medial plantar nerve is passes deep to the AB duct hallucis and flexor hallucis longus. Uh, the sensation to the medial half of the foot and first three point, three and a half digits. And motor function usually to media one lumbrical, only one lumbrical and AB duct hallucis flexor digitorum brevis and flexor hallucis brevis, which makes sense, right? We studied this one. In the lateral plantar nerve, right after, uh, interesting, right after uh, posterior tibial nerve uh, coming into the tazar tunnel, it usually bifurcate into a median and lateral uh, plantar nerve. The first branch of the lateral plantar nerve is a Baxter nerve. So lateral plantar nerve usually passes directly through the AB hallucis muscle belly and sensory innervation of the medial calcaneus and lateral heel. Motor function to the adductor hallucis, quadratus plantae, and AB ductus digit minimi, lateral three lumbricals, and all interosseous muscles. But pay attention to medial calcaneal nerve. Medial calcaneal nerve is typically branch off of the posterior tibial nerve proximal to the tarsal tunnel, actually. So it's not really happening inside of the tarsal tunnel. But 25% of patients, they usually branches off the lateral plantar nerve and run uh, nerve and runs superficial to flexor retinaculum. So, um, the calcaneal, medial calcaneal nerve is not really always happen with compression in the lateral plantar nerve. And then uh, medial calcaneal nerve provides sensory innovation to posterior medial, medial heel. So this is a, just a cartoon. Tibial nerve is the heel area S1 and 2. 
and then sura nerve is S1 and 2 in the lateral side of the foot, and then lateral plantar nerve, S1 and 2, and one and a half. Medial plantar nerve is the um, L4, L5. Saphenous is the L3, L4. So uh, tarsal tunnel syndrome, actually I never uh, had to pay attention to this tarsal tunnel syndrome as a pediatric pediatrist. However, my patients with spastic um, diplasia or hemiplasia, they tend to complain about foot pain. And I'm thinking they may have a tarsal tunnel syndrome or sura nerve compression. I think I have been missing this component. So I was very fascinated by learning these new things. So it is the most common entrapment syndrome in the foot and ankle, which is tarsal tunnel syndrome, and then caused by posterior tibial nerve compression. And then another cause is plantar valgus, so pronated foot or talipes equinovirus. This happened to my patients all the time, but how come I did not know these things? So now I'm gonna be better doctor after I study this one, right? And then if when you have ankle sprains, muscle abnormalities, history of trauma, tenosynovitis, arthritis, diabetes mellitus, and hypothyroidism. Symptom is usually pain, tingling, numbness, and treatment is uh, correct by mechanics with using some orthotics and NSAIDs, physical therapy and surgery. Oh, I just tried to write Baxter's nerve entrapment since we mentioned this one during live demonstration and I was not knowing this one very well. So I read it a little bit. So uh, you guys can study more than uh, what I'm presenting here to get to know Baxter nerve entrapment. So Baxter nerve is the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve and Baxter's nerve is compressed between the AB of the hallucis brevis and medial side of the quadratus plantae due to poor foot mechanics or excess foot pronation or flat feet. So a lot of uh, diplegic cerebral palsy has a significant uh, plantar valgus fit. So I have to really think about this um, Baxter's nerve and entrapment when they complain the foot pain. In poorly prescribed orthotics and heel pad atrophy, which is me getting old, you know, heel pad gets atrophy. And I don't run, but I have sometimes I have a heel pain. Hmm, getting old is not good, right? And uh, I don't think I can run because uh, already I have a heel pad atrophy. Okay, heel pain is the same with the plantar fasciitis, except Pain is not really related to weight bearing. And treatment is a rest to quarter therapy, physical therapy, custom orthotics, and injection, sometimes surgery. Okay, so I just to show some pictures again. You can see the posterior tibialis tendon, uh, flexor distum longus tendon. Now you see, looks like a two, one, two. This must be vein or artery in you can see the um, posterior tibial nerve here at the um, tarsal tunnel level. You can see tarsal tunnel here, see? This is the tarsal tunnel. And then this one, when we scan down a little bit, looks like uh, uh, nerves are splitting. This is the artery, looks like one and two. I can be wrong, but that's the way I interpret it because honeycomb shape here. Still, we are at the um, tarsal tunnel level and you can see the um, muscles are here and then artery and then you can see the still uh, flexor retinaculum on the top. Oh, so that was my last uh, uh, slide. So I reviewed uh, Sura nerve uh, plantar nerve, nerves, and what else did, oh, posterior tibial nerve. So it wasn't a perfect, um, I think, lecture, but I did my best. So when I have a better videos or better pictures, I will uh, revise my lecture, but this is uh, my last slide. Thank you so much. If you have questions, go back and study hard. Thank you, bye-bye.